Here on Mad Zone HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association, I'm joined by men's head soccer coach Tom Martin. Coach, a big, big win on, against Hofstra on Saturday. Saturday, excuse me. Off to the quarterfinals, excuse me, the semifinals. Probably as big as it gets for us. I mean, it, it, it's a great result. Uh, that was our most complete game of the season against a very good team under some adverse conditions, but it, it, just, just great. The kids executed game plan stuff that we talked about during the week what to do, what not to do, how to defend, how to attack, things to look for. Really it made you feel good as a coach when you see that kind of stuff come to fruition. Kyle made maybe the save of the season late in the game. Connor made a goal happen out of almost nothing. They came ready to play. They did. In the first half, we dominated them. And, and that, that doesn't happen in college soccer to a lot of teams, let alone JMU and, and Hofstra. And we kind of in the first half beat them in their own game. We were winning 50-50 balls. We were aggressive. We were stepping up the pressure of the ball at the right times. We manufactured a great goal between Josh and Connor. And, and you know, the finish is what, what, what the end result usually shows and people recognize. But the goal was, was really developed well from a pass out of the back. Connor made a nice diagonal run to get wide and gave it just a picture-perfect serve to Josh on a platter. And Josh took it really well and beat a very good goalkeeper. We got off to a great start. And... You know, at, at halftime, it's, it, it's one of those things where you know that a team like Hops is going to come out and high pressure you and, and really run at you, and it's going to be emotional, and it's going to be tough, and you're going to have to weather a storm. But at the same time, you, you go into halftime, and it's, it, it's a little bit confusing how you want to approach it. You know, if, if it's not broke, don't fix it, or are you going to muddle it up and, and, and change things and, and ruin a good thing? And what we really found we wanted to do was, was, was reinforce what we were doing well and warn the guys, look, this is what's going to happen. Put yourself in their situation. They're going to have to step extra men. They're going to have to come forward. But at the same time, it's going to give you opportunities to catch them on the break. And, and all credit to Connor. We picked up a ball around midfield. Connor fought off two or three guys to, to, to get the ball, uh, pinned his ears back, went to goal, got inside the box, and, and just out-muscled a couple people and finished a very good finish, which effectively was the game. But with all that said, you hit the nail on the head. Sometimes a 2-0 lead is, is a very dangerous lead. You, you, you relax, and you may let the other team back in the game. At that point in the game, Hofstra sent everybody forward. We had a couple other chances with Jamal, Steven, and, and even Josh. But they got a, a real dangerous free kick in a very, very opportune location. And a, a lot of times your scouting report will tell you what is coming, but you can never guarantee it's going to be 100%. They have, have a very good player. Uh, the, the kid Holland took an excellent free kick, beat our wall, was going in the upper 90. Kyle just made a very, very good save. Uh, one of those kind of saves where all you can do is get some fingertips to it. You, there's no way that you're going to hold it. And basically that was the ball game. That was their best chance. They didn't score. It was late in the game and momentum was, was their way. But that effectively sealed the game. Just, just a great game for us. Great result. Moving forward, UNC Wellington, obviously another tough team this Friday night in the semifinals. Your early thoughts on them? Wilmington is different. We played uh, probably our second best game of the season against them early in the season. It could have gone either way. It ended up a draw uh, at our place. Wilmington is a little different to prepare for. Wilmington is, is, is really maybe one of the top two or three strongest teams we've seen all, all year, and including you know top ten teams at the time when we played them, the Penn States, the Virginias, you know, the Furmans, the people like that. And, and they are because not only are they well-coached, but they're, they're a team, they're a squad, they're a heavily senior-laden team. They've got a lot of guys that have been around and achieved a lot of success. And, and some of these other teams that we've played that have been very, very good, they're good teams, but they're led by a couple individuals. Uh, Wilmington is not that case. Wilmington is more team-oriented. Yes, they have two or three very explosive players that, that can turn a game, but they probably go about 16, 18 deep, and that's their strength. And at this point in the season, that's a trump card that if you have it on your squad and everybody's healthy and you're playing well, it really can be used to your advantage, and Wilmington is that type of team. Two games left in the CAA schedule. Hopefully we can get to Sunday. First, it's Wilmington on Friday night in Delaware. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. We're looking forward to it.